Hello, I'm Peter Forbes, a full-time but amateur photographer from Sandhurst in Berkshire in the UK. I've spent 40 years taking stills and a little bit of video imaging um, and now I wanted to stretch myself a little bit more and get into uh, compositing but I don't want to use um, stock images and I don't want to use um, uh, Photoshop paint brushes and things like that to create these if I can help um, if I can't help it. So I want to do my own images um, and I'm looking at creating images of uh, initially sparks, flames and smoke um, in its various forms so that I can use those in compos compositing during this coronavirus lockdown uh, uh, without anything else to shoot. So um, I have uh, started with, I'm starting with sparks um, and uh, so this video is just to give uh, a very quick run through on um, how to shoot and how to process uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop um, sparks starting with um, common or garden sparklers um, so I'll get straight into it. For the shoot I used indoor sparklers as I uh, it was a lot easier for me to work in my studio uh, didn't want to work outside in it uh, black backdrop so that the sparks would show up against it in a darkened environment I've got the floods on at the moment for uh, uh, for the video cameras, but it uh, was necessary to work out oh, again uh, advantageous to work in a darkened environment um, So that the sparks show up properly. I will turn the floods out Now, but the cameras will compensate for that. It was a lot darker than this in eventuality. In fact, it was like that um, A little bit brighter than actually they're not showing off enough I used my 50 mil prime set to manual focus because it wasn't going to auto focus in the dark and I didn't want it to uh, focusing on the um, sparkler uh, program mode manual, similar reasons, didn't want anything to move, want to control the light. Uh, you want that to set to uh, a, a minus three exposure value. Um, so uh, looking for, for yeah, minus three stops. Um, in my case that would have been uh, five seconds exposure uh, at aperture of f22 um, and an ISO uh, you can see there of L. Uh, again in my case that was a 50 ISO 100 would be fine if you can get the room darker uh, or indeed above 100 but you just need to set it such that the um, uh, the whole exposure comes out at about three stops below uh, standard exposure for it. Uh, you can see that I've set the sparkler about uh, again a meter in front of the backdrop and uh, a meter away from the camera. Uh, you don't want any sparks, stray sparks uh, going on to anything um, and a wooden tabletop to avoid fire. Strongly advise against putting it on a carpet. These are the five exposures I took from that one sparkler. You can see it burning down from there. Uh, following this, I'll go into Lightroom. So just to show you the type of thing that can be done with the sparks once you've got them. Um, you can see here I've got five different shots from one of the sparklers. Uh, you can see it burning down in the, uh, the slope there. Um, uh, they're in Lightroom, so just to show you a uh, quick touch up in Lightroom before taking them across to Photoshop, um, and then I'll show you uh, a couple of things, or one thing that can be done anyway in uh, in Photoshop. Um, so just doing it to one of the sparks at the moment, cut down the file size a little bit so we don't have huge files, there's a lot of dead stuff around. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way to the sparks because I'm going to copy this crop to all the others. Um, we can lose the tabletop because that's never going to want to be there and drop down a bit so that's a reasonable crop. Then what I try and do again is bump up clarity a little bit, bump up dehaze a little bit. The only bit that's pure white is that bit in the dead center. We never get rid of it but you may as well lose all the whites. Um, you want as much black as you can just in case some of this uh, fell into the backdrop um, and put a bit of light in your backdrop so let's make that as dark as possible. I do an alt click on the black slider and wait until all the black is pretty much black. A little bit less than that, maybe about there. Um, so that's the black slider. Let's just see where we are on the highlights, see how much of that center is blown out completely. Again, alt click on the highlights and just move that down till the white spot disappears. So that's as much of the highlights as I would want to get rid of. Um, 
just to make sure now we've lost all the whites, I want as much as a spark, so I want as bright spark as possible. So I would take it into an HSO layer, uh, down on the right hand side, Q saturation and luminance, um, and take the saturation of my oranges and yellows a long way up, and that is because they look a little bit too wide and, and yellow at the moment. But that's because I'm also going to take the luminance of my oranges and yellows all the way up. That will take some of the saturation out of it. Still a bit oversaturated there, so I'll drop it a little bit. Okay. Um, back to basics, and that's pretty much where I want to be there. I won't bother just doing the contrast. Um, I'll just play the detail if I can. It's a fairly graphic image, so you may as well um, so take the sharpening up to, uh, you know, again, usual um, couple of pixels radius and um, uh, uh, yeah, a reasonable 120 or something on the sharpening, but then make sure to mask it. So again, Alt click on the masking slider. Um, that obviously has zero mask and you can see the mask kicking in as I slide it. And you want to make sure that you're only sharpening the actual sparks. Take it all the way up and you start losing them. But just drop back down to where you're only sharpening the sparks about there. Um, and that's about it for what I would do to one of those images. I want to make sure that I copy that across all five of them. So I will highlight all five at the bottom, then move to sync them. So I sync make sure that I've got everything I want synced. I've not done any locals, I've not done many transformations, that's okay, I've got any spot removals, but the rest is pretty much checked, so I can synchronize all of those, and they come out looking a little bit like that. Just check that I haven't cropped too much off the bottom of that fifth one. No, we still got lots of sparks there on the bottom. Lost a couple on there, just to adjust that crop a little bit. There's the tabletop there. Yeah. Just drop it with those crop in a Photoshop if we need to. Okay, so you've got your five. Um, by all means, take all five into Photoshop, that gives you a nice choice um, uh, into whatever image you're going to combine them with. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to open them all in one file. So I want to edit and drop down to layers in Photoshop. That will open them all five as five layers in a single file. So there they all are in Photoshop, um, and I want them on that image. So I will now highlight all five. And the trick here is to shift. And make sure you've actually got the move tool, so V for the move tool. Shift click on the file, and you can now see it's grabbed it. Drag it up to the one you want to combine it with. Wait for that to appear. Keep holding the shift and the click. Drag it back down again, and release them both. You can now see that all five of them are included. I'll hide those for now, that's what we did previously. Let's just group them. Okay, so now we've got all five of those in a group um, under the layer zero on this file. Um, we actually don't need that file anymore, so I'm going to close that. So we've now just got a wonderful tink, as in uh, Chloe Rank Harrington. Um, and uh, she was a model for a while ago, actually, it's an old picture. But uh, uh, again, just for illustration purposes, I am going to put sparks behind one of her hands, uh, but in front of her shoulder. Uh, and the way you do that is to mask out her hands first. But let's just make sure, I'm only going to do this to one, you can do it with as many as you like, you can put a spark behind each finger or whatever you want to do. Uh, this is just to illustrate what the kind of things you would do, and how easy it is when you've got a black background on the spark. Um, so if we just take one of those, move it above the image, and you can see black background in the spark. Thing to do there, move it to either a green or lighten mode. Lighten works a little bit better with these, so take it to a lighten mode. Uh, I want to make that a lot bigger than it is, so I'm going to Control T to transform it. And zoom out a little bit so I can see it being transformed, and then just 
grab an edge, oops, grab an edge and trick it out. Get me a nice big set of sparks. And I want to spin it to make sure that the, the I, I, it looks like the major bit of those sparks is actually coming out of this side and I want that to appear like it's coming out from my fingers a little bit. So I'm just going to spin it as well and move it down to behind her hand. And that looks about reasonable for lots and lots of sparks coming out of, the, of her hand. Um, so that's fine for that. We can tick that for now. Let's see how that goes. Uh, now we've just got to make sure that we mask her hand out to, a, to make it appear like that spark is behind her hand. So you choose, just hide that one for a minute, choose whatever your preferred option for masking is, or for selecting is anyway, before you get the mask. Uh, mine happened to be uh, the quick selection tool, and quick selection tool over her fingers, and through her hand, Oop, as long as you actually got her selected rather than the spark. Click that, this time again, over her finger. That kind of thing. And you just keep refining that with whatever your preferred selection is. And as you probably are aware, there's a dozen different ways to select um, until you've got a nice cut out of her hands. I happen to have one already on this file, which I will just load up now. So again, once you've got a selection tool, I can right click and load a selection. And the selection is that. And now we've got her hands selected. I want to create a mask from that, and I want to create a mask where her hands are hidden. So if I just, with that selection there, if I alt click on the mask tool at the bottom right here, that will give me a nice hidden set of hands. They're exactly the opposite. Now I actually want that on the sparks rather than on her. So I can just grab that mask and move it up. And you can already see hands in front, spark and shoulder behind. And now it's just a matter of moving that around to get that spark wherever you want it. I'll put it in the beetle. And you can see it moving quite nicely behind the hand. In this particular case, it's moving with the mask, which we don't want. So I will control Z to undo that. And the little link, chain link between the layer, <coughs> excuse me, and the mask, if we just click on that, and that disappears, and I de-link that from her, from the spark, and now when you move it, the mask stays put, and it's just the image that's moving. I think. Probably that's reasonable with a little glow coming out between her fingers. I don't particularly want the sparks down by her hand here, and I don't particularly want some of the sparks on her face. That can be dealt with quite nicely on the mask um, just by painting in black. So you want your uh, brush tool, which is just select B for brush. Make sure that the black is the uh, color you're going to be painting with over on the left. Um, on the mask tool, on the actual mask side, uh, and then reasonably sized full feather, and just paint away. You can see I'm painting with a fairly small flow, so that it gives me a little bit more control over it. Don't want this coming out the bottom. Don't want it covering her face particularly. Just fade those away. Don't mind a couple on the cheek down there, not covering the eyes or the mouth. And again, I don't want a part of a wrist, so I just paint black on the mask and get rid of those and get them coming out at a sort of forward looking angle, and that is what I'm looking for. And that's pretty much it. I won't waste your time by doing lots and lots of those, but you can either just do one under each palm, or indeed if you wanted to do, to do eight one behind each of the fingers and make them slightly smaller. Um, but that's just how easy it is to manipulate those sparks once they're on a blank background. Um, 
So you know what to do next.